Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders for KW Bonsai. Today we're going to be looking at my larch forest. We're going to be doing some maintenance to the forest floor and we're going to be doing some pruning to the top of the tree. So we're going to put the tree, it's just sitting in its uh, doubled up seed tray right now. So we're going to put it in the wooden frame just to show you how it fits in. And I'll show you the wooden frame before I put the trees in just to show you how I made it. So here's a close-up of the uh, wooden frame. It's just made with uh, oak trim from the recycled store. So uh, it was probably part of someone's house at one time. And I've I mitered the corners and glued them together with waterproof glue. And I put feet underneath it, glued those on also. And then across the bottom, I've put a strengthening piece so the seed tray sits on top of it. Because the seed trays are a little bit flexible. They tend to bend down in the middle a bit. So that's it. Um, kind of a simple way to get a nice, uh, attractive kind of uh, landscape planting. So let's get our larch forest and put it in here. Okay, so I've got my larch forest. It's just in a doubled up nursery seed tray and I put holes in the bottom for drainage. So we're gonna slip it inside the wooden frame like that. And there, it's, you can pick it up easily now and it looks uh, not too bad. So here's the larch forest today. Um, the needles have come in quite vigorously. I water it lots because larch is like water, keeps them really healthy. If you withhold the water you'll get shorter needles and they won't grow as much. But I like to water them lots, keep them healthy and control the growth with pinching. Uh, in a healthy larch forest you'll get up to four spurts of growth a summer. So we'll pinch it back It'll grow again, subdivide, grow again, pinch it back, and it'll do it four times in a summer. So you can, uh, you know, you can get some pretty dense ramification over a single season with a large forest. So today we're going to work on our forest floor again. We're going to do more detailing to it, do some maintenance to the moss. And we're also going to, going to uh, balance some vigor in the tree again. The upper parts of the tree are more vigorous, so we're going to remove some of the needles and pinch them back. The lower parts we're going to let just keep growing, so we're not going to touch these weaker lower branches, but we are going to try and prune the tops a little bit, pinch them. Um, since you last saw the forest, I did rotate this tree in spring, so it's a little more vertical from the front view now. And on our collection trip, I did get two small larches, which are here and here, for the back of the forest. So now I have two groups of five trees in each group, which adds up to ten trees, which is an even number, but whatever. Um, I am trying to grow a little cutting of a larch here. So far it's surviving, so we'll see how it does. And the trees aren't positioned exactly how I want them yet. When we repot this forest next year, I'll adjust the position of, of the trees to make it look better. Uh, these trees, the new trees, they were quite severely root pruned and I could only fit them in the corners here without disturbing the roots on the other trees too much so they're just kind of there temporarily in that position make sure they survive and uh, the next year when they have a little more roots we'll position them in a better better spot so it's not so even looking so before we uh, do any work to the larch forest we're gonna go in there's a forest nearby my house and we're going to go in and have a look at it 
and get some ideas for the forest floor. Things we can do to it, features we can add. This forest is, um, when you first look at it, you see the trees and the, you know, the heights of the trees. And then as your eye goes in, you start to look at all the details of the forest floor and the trees become kind of secondary. So I like that. I like to, you know, when you first walk up to the tree, when you first walk up to the forest, you see the overall forest and then it leads your eye in to look at all the details on the forest floor. So it kind of holds your interest for quite a while. So we'll break now, we'll wander through a forest and look for ideas for our forest floor, kind of see what features we can add, what looks realistic, what doesn't, and adjust our landscaping to suit. So here's the forest we're gonna be looking at. It's at the base of our water tower. It's uh, actually part of the park and it's pretty natural. Uh, there's some pathways through it, which we'll wander on. And we're gonna go in and look at uh, details in the forest. Things you would see on the forest floor to give us inspiration to apply to our larch forest. So this area of the forest was uh, sort of a wetlands. It was underwater for most of the spring. And most of the trees in it have died and I don't know what caused it to suddenly become, you know, a bog area, but it did. So they've cut down a lot of the dead stumps and that. But yeah, most of the trees in this area are dead, so there's one feature. So here's some standing water in this section. It's kind of cool to have little pockets of water here and there in the forest. Especially a larch forest. Larches grow in... Uh, you know, fairly wet areas. They like the moisture. So in this wet section, there's not many trees grow, there's a few, but it's mostly grass. So, you know, in a bonsai forest, it would be sort of a mossy area. There's a view at the top of the trees. So we're gonna follow the path. Look for more interesting features in the forest. Here's a section of the forest that's uh, covered in forget-me-nots, which is a type of flower. Adds a little bit of color to the forest floor. I'm not sure how you would do that in a bonsai tree to get some small little flowers like that, but it would be kind of a neat thing to have. Further along here, we've got our first kind of big tree that's tipped over. It looks like it was a spruce tree. So that's another interesting feature in a forest that uh, we could apply to our bonsai trees. Here's an old rotted stump that uh, looks pretty cool. I think that was the spruce tree stump. And there's the spruce tree that's tipped over. Here's another tree that's tipped over going across the pathway. Another tree there that's tipped over. I really like this section up ahead. If you look at the forest floor, it's just covered in roots from these spruce trees. And they're really cool. They're like snakes going across the ground. And uh, yeah, I would love to have that on my larch forest floor someday as the roots develop. It would be really cool. Uh, up ahead, there's a tree that's tipped over that hasn't landed on the ground. It's still on an angle. Looks cool, kind of adds some visual interest. So the forest floor here is pretty uh, barren of grass. There's some tufts over here that you can see, but most of it's like broken sticks and spruce needles. So one of the viewers wrote in that it would be neat to have uh, chopped up peat to kind of simulate this type of ground. It would look uh, quite realistic, 
like you know pine or larch litter on the ground. So in the forest we have quite a mixture of uh, tree sizes. There's sort of our major trees which are spaced fairly wide apart and then in between we have our you know our younger trees trying to grow up sort of underneath the canopy of the larger trees. Here's some shelf fungus growing on uh, a Manitoba maple and here's some cool spruce roots going going across the forest floor like snakes. Here's some more uh, spruce roots. They're very shallow, very wide spreading in the forest and they really uh, really look neat. I like them. Here's some more grass and flowers on the forest floor. Quite a variety of different textures and colors. Kind of what we're looking for in our larch forest is a good variety. We're starting to get into the coniferous section of the forest. And you can see the pathway is just covered with roots. Just all kinds of surface roots. Here's a close-up of the kind of the pine litter on the floor, all the needles and broken branches and roots. So that's kind of the surface coloring we're looking for in our larch forest. Because the larches shed all their needles too, just like spruces, and it would be a very similar look in a larch forest. So in the coniferous section, there's not a whole lot of, you know, new trees growing up. The uh, forest floor is very barren. Nothing much grows under these spruce and pine trees. Here's a Scots pine that's growing in the forest. Very slender. Lots of dead branches as we go up. And then only the very top of it is alive. So if we look back from the coniferous section of the forest, back towards the deciduous section of the forest, you can see the undergrowth. There's none in the uh, coniferous section. It's very barren. But in the deciduous section, there's all that undergrowth underneath the canopies of the trees. And it's mostly, uh, a lot of these trees haven't fully developed their leaves yet, so there's light getting down to the forest floor, causing all these small trees and bushes to grow. Here's another section with a lot of surface roots on the forest floor. If we go in and look at them, you can see the tops of the surface roots have scars where people have walked on it and uh, disrupted the bark. It looks really cool. I like that. I hope to do that with my larch forest someday when I get surface roots like this. Here's some more of those wild surface roots under these spruce trees. Very flat and horizontal spreading. Very chaotic also. Here's a trunk that's snapped on a Scots pine. It's still kind of resting in the crotch of the tree and hasn't hit the forest floor yet. Here's the roots of another spruce tree. And you can see some of the roots are actually come off and there's a space of underneath them. So it's almost like it, you know, it's growing in the air almost. Yeah, really cool. Here's some more of those all those lower dead branches on the spruce tree. Starts about uh, a quarter of the way up the tree. And the dead branches continue almost right up till the tip of the tree, which is the only part with needles. Here's the shallow root system of a spruce that's tipped over. And then over here, we've got a dead spruce. 
There's the base of it. If we pan up. You can see the top of it, it's totally dead. It still has all its fine branches. So if you do have a bonsai tree that dies, save the skeleton. You can always use it in a forest planting. Here's a close-up of the dead root system on that spruce that died. Here's another tree that's dead. Has a really cool root system back there. Here's an apple tree in the middle of the forest, which is kind of a surprise. There's the base of it. And it's covered in beautiful flowers. The apple flowers. There's a close-up of the apple flowers. Blowing in the wind. Here's some nice mossy roots on a spruce tree. Here's another tree that's tipped over. It's still partway in the ground. Leaning up against some other trees up here. It'll stay there till it rots away. Here's a tree that is rotting away quite, uh, quite quickly. You can see all the rotted features along the trunk. nestled between some trees over there. Here's another wet section of the forest. Not much on the ground floor, just kind of mud. So that's it for our walk through a forest in springtime. So let's go back to the bonsai benches and we'll try and apply some of these ideas to our larch forest. So we're back from our expedition to the forest. Got lots of ideas we can try out. Uh, I'll just show you these new larches. You can see there's very little foliage on them. They're just surviving and hopefully they'll continue to do so if you compare them to the lush growth on the other trees. The one at the back here isn't really really vigorous down low. A lot of these lower branches have died but we do have some some growth down here but not a lot. So we're not going to do too much to those trees. We're just gonna you know let them be, let them gain a bit of vigor before we do anything with those trees. I did uh, prune the tops off to kind of get them close to the height I want them and we'll reposition them better next year if they live. If they don't live they still look good. The, the trunks they can be dead trunks back there. I've even thought of uh, you know positioning a bunch of dead sticks back here to look like tree trunks. If you do have trunks back here you don't need to have foliage on them they can just kind of go up into the canopy so from the front you wouldn't even see that they're they're dead and it would give a better scale to the forest it would uh, have more trees more tree trunks in the distance so today um, we're gonna do some uh, moss pruning it's getting a little thick and out of control we're getting a lot a lot of moss that's uh, growing around the base of the trees so we're gonna clean that up and our moss that's kind of trained to look like bushes is getting a little out of control so we're gonna prune that back and you can see it's spread all over the forest floor so we're gonna clean up sections so it doesn't look so monotonous so we get more variety in the forest so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean up the moss around the trunks of the trees so we're just going to go in with the tweezers and uh, start picking away the moss at the base of the trees. 
so it's not growing up the trunks. With a forest, you need long tweezers to get in to keep your moss under control and pick up twigs that have fallen, clean up stuff on the surface of your soil. So, yeah, if you got if you get a pair of long tweezers, they they're very helpful when working on forests. So we're just continuing to pick away the moss from the bases of the trees. Eventually, I hope to get, uh, you know, surface roots exposed on these trees. So we're getting there. We're, uh, we've got this group of five trees, the moss cleared away from the trunks. And just a note, um, if you don't keep up with your maintenance of the moss or moving it around the trunks, you'll get the bark won't be this nice light color. It'll be dark and wet. And you don't want to leave removing the moss from around the base of your trunks till just before a show because it'll have this dark, wet ring of kind of half-rotted bark around the bottom. So it's important to keep up the maintenance on your forest, pruning away that moss so it looks good at showtime. So we're working over on this group of five trees now. Picking away the moss from the base. And we're, we're exposing the roots a little bit. We're starting to get some surface roots on this uh, forest. Not a lot yet, but it'll come. We'll keep working on that as we repot them every time and allow yourself quite a bit of time to do this um, I've been at it about an hour now and I've still got three trees to go But I like doing this kind of work. I like it more than doing brutal root pruning and things like that to trees. This is kind of fun stuff. Making your trees look really miniature and kind of realistic looking. You notice that um, one of the appeals of a forest is that the forest floor kind of reflects the season. You can see it in the sun now. It looks uh, very spring-like. Everything's lush and green. In early spring, the moss is brown. It kind of reflects early spring. So your, your bonsai trees and your forests are always changing with the seasons. They look different under different lighting conditions, a sunny day versus a cloudy day. Rainy days, they look different. So it's uh, part of the appeal of bonsai for me is, you know, seeing the daily changes to the moss, the trees, the lighting, the weather conditions. It, it, uh, it's kind of neat. So we'll be back when the rest of the trees are removed of their moss around the trunk. Okay, so I've got the uh, moss removed from all the major trunks. I'm not gonna remove it from the two new trees. I just don't wanna disturb them till their roots get established, so. The next job we're gonna do is start uh, scissor pruning the moss. So we're gonna go in and scissor prune it closer around the tree trunks and we're going to leave tufts uh, to make it look like uh, bushes and that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, so we'll prune it up. So we're just going to go in with our curved scissors and scissor prune areas of the moss.
Well, we've lost our nice sunlight. Um, it's clouding over and it's uh, actually starting to rain. But um, I'm not totally finished with the moss, but I've done quite a bit of it and you kind of get the idea. I've got my bushes back here and I've pruned up a lot of the moss into more little tufts. You can see it at the front here, here, just to give it uh, a little more interest so it's not like a flat layer of moss. Um, so we'll continue landscaping this year. We'll probably do another update uh, midsummer as the moss gets longer and needs pruning again. And we'll try and get some more creative ideas in it. Um, maybe some dead stumps coming up here, more trees in the back, uh, maybe a dead tree here and there. So we'll be doing stuff like that in the future, so stay tuned for more. Um, so the last thing I wanted to do today was uh, we're going to do some equalization of vigor in the trees. So at the top we're going to remove all the downward facing needles just to take a bit of foliage out of the top and the bottom branches we're going to leave as is and let them grow. Uh, it's still a little early to be pinching the shoots. They're still kind of elongating. So um, I think we'll leave the pinching for later on and it's starting to rain now. So I'm thinking even I might leave the needle plucking for later on. I'll just show you quickly what I'm going to do. Okay, so hopefully I can do this before it starts raining too hard. So we're just going to remove some of the downward facing needles. Just pick them off by hand on the new shoots coming out. They come off really easily in spring. Just tearing them off. This gives a little more light um, to the lower branches. It also removes some of the vigor from the upper branches. And later on in the year we do this for the entire tree, but in spring we want to keep as much foliage in those lower branches as possible. I'll just give you an overall view of the forest before we go. So we'll go in and have a close-up look. So that's it for today. Nigel Saunders for KW Bonsai. We'll see you next time.